to um, this event today. This is an oral history. It's our first one for the town of Waterloo, Alabama. Today is the 30th of March, 2024. And uh, I, I have a few questions that we want to ask just so we can let you introduce yourself and then we'll let you take the, the chair, so to speak, and tell um, whatever you would like to say about what you remember uh, perhaps some stories about Waterloo, your family, um, anything that you would like to be recorded for posterity's sake. Um, so again, I, if, if can you could you please tell us your name? Lawrence Faulkner. Okay, and do we have permission to record the interview, Mr. Faulkner? Yes. Okay, and uh, do you want to tell us when and where you were born? I was born on the Fielder Farm, five and a half miles north of Waterloo. It's the farm north of Bruce Jr. Ellis Farm, farm and home. Okay, um, do you want to tell us anything about your family? How many brothers and sisters you had and who your parents were? I had two brothers, two sisters, and my parents were Samuel Faulkner and Maud, Maud Lillian Fielder Faulkner. Okay. All right, that's um, that's the formal part. Would you just like to take the, the chair, so to speak, and, and and talk about what you'd like to talk about? Well, I told you about my dad's store out here. Uh-huh. He had one up on Buffalo's Creek also. And I already told you about the Barrier Brothers. The Barrier Brothers had a store across the street from my dad's store. And they, there was a guy named Bob Ball who lived down in one of these hollers. He killed his wife, and he went off to prison. Came somehow or other, got back and got out. And he would visit his daughter, living in that house across from my dad's store. And I was a little boy, and it scared me to death to see that man. And the, the, the logging rail, the, the logs that went out to uh, near Cherry Chapel Loop in Tennessee. I need to take. Bay and Jim and some people out there that show them all up route. Uh, and there was, was a, it's a, Mr. Boatwright's daughter coming to this? She, she was not able to. She's got a new grandchild. And so she had to go down to visit her grandchild. Oh, Lord, I was looking forward to seeing if she had a map of Till Lane. The Till Lane was started out here at the this Hart's Jim Creek Park and went at an angle and came out over there somewhere where uh, L.V. Dennis lived. And there was no road up Second Creek at that time. And I remember sitting in that store and watching people in hard hats over on Second Creek Hill. they blasting rock out. They would uh, work and work like little beavers. Then they'd put their hard hats on and run like mad. Then there'd be a big explosion. But what they were doing was blasting out channel channel lining or rip rap for the bridge going out of Waterloo and the one on, on the Bumpus Creek. Now here's something that's funny. Greenberry Foster had Alzheimer's. He lived out there across from Clyde Stassel on Pea Ridge. And Blind Henry Sharp passed away down here where Ray Scott lives now. And uh, four of the Foster girls went down to the to, to see him that night, see the family. On the way back, my my 21-year-old brother, half brother, had borrowed my grandmother's white gown. And he got in the uh, blind Henry Sharp's grave and came out of that grave with that white gown. It, and uh, one of the foster boys told my brother later, said he scared those girls nearly halfway to death. Uh, my dad would pick up corn down this river road and grind it and then take it back to people on the on that route. And I've, I've already talked about Emsley Scott, Carl Mangum, and Hubert and George Mangum. Emsley, mother married Scott. He died. She she married a Jim Peck Mangum 
and they had a child named Carl Mangum. He's buried at Shiloh. And then when Miss Caroline died, uh, Jim Peck married Annie Annie Eves. They called her Annie Peck. And they had George and and uh, Hubert. George and Hubert are not related to Emsley, but but uh, Carl's related to both of them. Any of you ever hear about the gypsies that used to roll this countryside here? They'd, they'd come in groups, people. You ever heard that thing? Yes, sir. They, they, you had to nail everything down, they'd rob you blind. And I remember as a child going across the railroad bridge in Florence, and those boards would just ripple as you roll, went across them. My dad was taking eggs to a wholesaler in Sheffield and buying groceries, bring back down here to trade for more eggs. <laughs> Mm. Then Vernon, uh, Vernon Humphrey, anybody remember him? Do you remember Miss uh, Lillian Humphrey? Yes. Her father, her dad, dad good. her husband, he was sort of a mean fellow. He had a big building right behind this store up here, business building. Two-story building, had a, on the second floor it had a, had a porch, went all the way around that building. That's why I wanted to contact uh, Willene Higgins. She's gone. And Mr. Joe McCorkle had a pharmacy down here on the corner. And on the south side of that pharmacy, there's a little room in there full of wood caskets. You have any idea whether they're still in there or not? No, sir. I don't know about that. Would it be right here? Is it this building right here? The old library? Yeah, it's a nice building before we get to Thomas Duncan's house. There's a little room about as wide as here to Peter Linda. And along went the length of the store had a whole bunch of wooden caskets. And I've already mentioned Jack Epps having his restaurant on the south wall of the Ed Lord building. And when the before the lake came out, they, they removed all the graves that they could and moved people out. It, it affected it affected people very badly. I guess it would because they call it a rich farmland. One guy married one of my cousins. He hung himself up at Lawrenceburg. Got time to go farming again. He hung himself. Another guy would, every summer, they read him out of a map you've got. Every summer he'd be disappeared, be on the hill there between Buffus Creek and Second Creek. There'd be about 500 men looking for him every summer. And they'd finally, they'd, they'd take him to, uh, sometimes they'd take him to uh, Tuscaloosa for a while. But it was, uh, when you're going up this side of Second Creek, there's a little spring there on your right, down on the hill. His property was there, started there. Can I ask uh, a question, Mr. Faulkner? Yes. Uh, when they moved the cemetery, there, there's talk now that when the water goes down over behind where the senior center is now, there's talk that there's some imprints. Um, is yeah, that is. actually yeah. old caskets? I've heard different type stories. What do you think? It looks like graves. It looks, it, like, it looks it. like graves to me too. Um, I'd heard different stories about it, but that would have been where the cemetery was, wouldn't it? Oh, they had cemeteries all over this. Okay. All over this valley. Uh, Mr. Henry Evans lived up there above me. He he got killed out in Texas. He was standing under a tree. He worked for the railroad, and lightning hit the tree and killed him. They buried him in a brown suit. Railroad put him away real good. Years later, when they removed his grave, one of the guys came and told Mr. Henry. Described said he had a, said he had a brown suit on. Said it looked like he'd been placed in there yesterday. Mr. Evans said that's right. That's, that's what they did. That's what it looked like. And we had four people from Bumpus Creek and two from Waterloo killed in World War II. And 
Anybody want to know their names? Mm -hmm. Reuben Lord, he died of some kind of fever in the South Pacific. Arnold Ward was killed in, in France. Uh, Ernest Franklin, that's Jess Franklin's oldest son, he was killed in France or Germany. And Jesse Benson was killed in Europe. And Robert Adams had come home from a for a 15 day leave and just gotten back from Pearl Harbor when the Japs bombed the, the uh, USS Arizona. And he, he's down under there now. And one more. Oh, yeah. Eddie Threat's youngest brother, they called him, his name was, we called him Topwater. He was killed in Europe. And Earl Large's wife, and this, this is nitpicking, but she was born under a big oak tree on our farm. Uh, and they used to, they put sawdust, put ice in sawdust to preserve it to help people in the community that, have, that had sickness. And four, four of my classmates burned the cross in front of the principal's office. Mr. Bendoff, James Terry was one of them. I talked to him this morning. That <laughs> was something else. And, and has anybody been over and seen Mr. L, 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 S. Culver's marker? Yes. yes. Has his family on one side and a bunch of lies on the other. <laughs> you know what? Best I remember. Well, let's just say he stretched the truth. Said he built the road out to the Key West. Well, some other famous man built the road out to Key West. He probably poured some concrete. And I think he said he built the Holland Tunnel. And he built Yankee Stadium. He, he probably poured some concrete and all that, but he, he didn't build them. Does anybody have any pictures of the two engines? Some of this written information, some of these booklets has pictures of those two engines that that drove the train up Buffalo Creek. Anybody know where we get that? I've, I've seen been it. told that there's pictures in uh, Sir Roger's eye doctor at Swan. Mm -hmm. yes. He's got some pictures in his office there. He's got everything else. He I hadn't been in there, time. and when I go by there, he's closed usually. They said he probably let you make pictures of it. He's got some of all well. good. Yeah. There's, a book, yeah. there's a book here in Waterloo, put out oh, like one right. of those, that has a picture of those two, uh, two engines. Anybody remember Willie Benson? Yes, sir. If it's the same one. Willie Harvey's, Benson. Harvey's daddy. Yeah, we know him. Yeah, we know him. Yeah. Yeah. He, he was a... Uh, he was uh, Gilbert's daddy. Yeah. Uh, that may be a different one. That's a different one. What I know. He lived up the holler behind the the uh, where the Church of Christ is. Yeah. Up there, yeah. And he got mad at Ben Dahl up here, the high school principal, for some reason. And he came down there and said, "Had a knife about that long." And Mr. Porch was a, I believe he was a vocational ag teacher. He ran and said, Mr. Bendall said, Willie Benson's coming after you with a knife. and you better run. He looked down near the well house and saw about a six foot long piece of, of a two by four. They said he beat that man terrible. <laughs> and there's uh, across the road from where Helen, where Helen Parker lived, there used to be a little church called Palestine. Anybody remember that? Yes. Well, anyhow, there was a guy in there. He had a son that was uh, had mental problems. Anyhow, this guy got happy one night and said, I'm so happy, he said, if I could uh, if I had the wings of a June bug, I'd fly away to heaven tonight. He said, this little kid said, Pappy, he said, he said, June bug, get you before you got halfway. Uh, they used to have a, some baseball teams on Second Creek. Had one behind Lee Mac Paul's house. Had one behind 
your grandpa's house, Ernest, Ernest Hawkins' house, and they had had one up on the hill behind the Second Creek Church of Christ. And Cletus Hawkins tells me that they had one at the intersection of Second Creek Road and Grassy Creek Road. And one one time was going home from this may be boring to you guys. Huh? <laughs> was going home from, from school. We got up to uh, William Sharp's house and Gilbert Vincent had caught a gigantic turtle. That thing was that long, and they was riding that turtle turtle around the yard there. <laughs> and finally, that turtle shell was hung up on a tree this side of where Ray Scott lives now. Alfred Austin had an older brother named Andy Austin, and he had a taxi cab, a taxi in Florence, and I believe the story goes it had two Johnson brothers killed a man, and, and they they hired Andy to bring him down. They buried him on one of these sandbars down the river. It seemed like it was across from Wade's Cemetery, but I'm not sure about that. But he, he he was on his deathbed out there on Pea Ridge behind Mr. Walter Manson's house where the lady used to run the restaurant here that lives now. What's her name? Glenda? Uh, I'm not sure. There was a Glenda, Glenda Morgan? Glenda. Was it Glenda? Glenda Morgan? See, uh, before we get to Bumpus Creek, Three Wheel Baptist Church, and there's, there's a hollow there on your left. Before we get to Ruth. She Kelly. sells, she sold uh, Kelly, Kelly, Kelly and Scott Phillips. Yeah, that's where Walter lived. He went out to see Andy on his deathbed and Andy confessed to that. <laughs> One time there was about 12 stores, I don't remember, in Waterloo. And my, Morris Williams had three sons in World War II. They all three arrived in Florence on the same day in 1945, and Curly Sego was their first cousin. He arrived same same day. Anybody familiar with Booger Sager? Where can you get a copy of that? I got me a copy at a music store up in Lawrenceburg. I was told that Bill Mangum's grandfather. Doc Mangum, I believe is what they called him, was uh, one of these people that looted and pillaged during the war between the states. Yeah. Is that mentioned in there? It could be. I really don't remember. Uh, and I don't know. They It might be mentioned in there. I really couldn't, couldn't say one way or the other. Chalmer Hodges used to have a store about two stores down. And Doyle Young, he... he and Frank Potts were graduates of Waterloo High School and they became lawyers. After Doyle, after Doyle retired, I called him about some math problems. He was telling about, they, they used to intimidate Mr. Hodges. He had a, uh, he'd had a leg broken at one time, couldn't run very fast. And he'd chase them, they'd get away from them. I thought that was sort of funny. And then, anybody remember Mr. Tadgett? Yes. When, when we went to, to the lawyer's office to get my wife some help with her problem, there was a girl in there who said she was a niece of Henry Tadgett. She said her, her grandpa, Ann's daddy, would, would be involved in parades up there in Wisconsin and said he would dress up so, so that he was a whore. He, They'd tie his legs over the horse like this, and his hands down. He had the uh, horse had his hands going down into uh, uh, extra fake horse legs. So it looked like a six-legged horse. <laughs> I don't know where you understand things like that or not. Shaw holler. And Charlie Shaw had a had a gin down in Shaw holler. Had a sawmill and a store. And back in those days, I was telling Fay yesterday, a lot of the rich people, he was one of the rich folks around here, they, they, they would arrange to have their, child, their children married. 
you get your children, your daughter to marry my son. Mm -hmm. And Clyde Ellis Shaw used to work at the uh, animal shelter in Florence. He was one of them. Mm -hmm. That marriage didn't last very long. Mr. Lawrence, where was the Shaw holler? They can tell you that. You go, you, you go out to State Line Road, and there's a gravel road turning left going down to the Carson Cemetery. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you, if, all you do now is go down with a four, four wheeler. But that goes down in the Shaw Hall on the river. I wasn't sure where that, that guy was, apparently he was real well off. And Burr McFall, I think he lived where his grandpa lived, right? Mm -hmm. World War II came on and they wanted people to turn in gasoline, things like that they had. And uh, there was a uh, young black man well, first of all, this, this man went off to the war between the states and they told him to get rid of his slaves and he didn't do it. And he, uh, some of the slaves got one of his daughters pregnant. I think there's two or three of them. One of them named Dick. He told Dick, Bernhardt told Dick to go out there and bury that, get, dig a big hole in the garden, bury that 55 gallon drum of gasoline. Well, Dick did that all right, but he poured the can. When he got the hole dug, he pulled <laughs> took a cap off and boarded the ground. And, and Burmack was missing a uh, turkey. He kept bugging Dick about that. Finally, Dick said, well, yeah. I said, I did see that turkey. He was down there skating on a pond. So he fell down and broke his neck and said, I threw him over in the woods. Now, Dick, they had a party up there one time at Second Creek and Mr. Leona, and this is where it's fun. She spilled some coffee on his leg. His name was Dick. She said, did it burn you, Dick? I said, no, ma'am, but you burnt my leg. <laughs> and then uh, Dave, Dave Tyser and Robert Tyser, had, their daddy was named uh, John Tyser. He was trying to die up there. They didn't think there was much wrong with him. And so uh, Miss Leona, she, she grabbed two great big long knives and was sharpening them. He said, Miss Perkins, what are you going to do with those knives? She said, I'm going to operate on you. He said, I'm feeling a lot better now. <laughs> and had come in from down Bumpus Creek one time in 1948. Anderson Holloway had a load of co cotton. He came up that hill there. The last time you cross, last time 14 crosses Bumpus Creek, he didn't have any brakes on that truck. He tried to shift into low gear and lost control of it and he rolled back in the creek and turned over. It was a miracle nobody was killed. Robert Hinton was Leona's daddy. And uh, one of Leona's sisters had a had a, a little girl by Clarence Dowdy, married to Clarence Dowdy. She died. And Clarence Dowdy remarried years later. He came back to Miss Hinton and tried to collect that little daughter. And they got into a big fuss. Miss Hinton didn't want to let him go or let her go. And they got into a big fuss. So Robert Hinton killed Clarence Dowdy. And Clark Newman, I told you about, had the barber shop out here. He had a had a son that taught. Joe Newman taught at engineering at the University of Alabama. And I had some classes under Joe. And I guess one of the worst classes I was ever in, for grade-wise, and he, he previously, he'd come to ask his dad, he said, who are these Faulkner boys down here? He said, that's Mr. Sam's boys. He said, you be nice to them. So when the course was over, I got an A out of that course. Uh -huh. <laughs> he, some of you younger people are not that familiar with cattle hats, we dip cattle. Back before I was born, the ticks were bad in this part of the university. They brought the deer back in this part of the world. Ticks came back. There's one, when you pass the Ray Scotts, 
you turn left on that Hinton Road going to Pea Ridge, there's one over right there on your right. And then when you go up the hill at the Mail White Hill, you know where the Mail White Hill is? I think so. Named after your grandpa? Mm -hmm. uh, right past the Sirewood Spring, and your grandpa lived there on the left going north. The steps are still there. Mm -hmm. You go up that hill, or right there on the right, there's another path there. Or such a bat down in Union Holler, too. Yeah, I saw, saw a write up about that. They filled it up, hadn't they? Well, it's uh, trash and stuff, is that yeah. it? One time, Miss uh, Clara May Kill, Edna, Edna brought up the store on Bumpus Creek. She said, Clara May, what do you want? She said, Well, so I want everything in this store. <laughs> That's so funny. And I remember coming off of this Pea Ridge Hill back before the lake came out. That's the old, and I look out across this valley. It's in the wintertime, and it looked like a snake. That river looked just like a snake out there. And one time, it was during the Civil War, there's a guy came by and tried to leave some gold with one of my mother's aunts. She wouldn't take it. And she showed him buried up there somewhere. But they don't know whether they did or not. They got out there on Pea Ridge, we're close to where uh, Matty B lives now. Some of the scalawags killed him. He didn't, he didn't, that's far as he got. And I remember the day after the tornado, 43, at school. I don't know why we had school, but we did. And you look down in that valley, and I bet there's a million folks down there where the Church of Christ is now. Uh, I call them rubberneckers. And that was during the time that the gas was rising. I don't know where they got the gas to get down there, but they... Golly, it's awful. Oh, yeah. Lil Benson's wife and... Uh, brother, Lil Benson and his brother-in-law went off fox hunting one night. and They got not, not very far from the house, and they heard a loud noise of women screaming. They got back and the house that Lev lived in had the floor hadn't been nailed down yet. There's a bunch of hogs under there <laughs> walking, <laughs> raising the boards up. Anybody remember Bill, Bill, Big Jim Haynes? I've heard of him. I didn't know him personally. He had a he had a store about probably 60 feet north of here, and the steps. Up to the door, which is high as that ceiling right there, and he'd sit on, he'd sit up there, and his his legs were swollen about that big around. And I think he was an uncle of uh, Mr. Joe McCorkle. I mean, Miss Miss Mert McCorkle. She was a hang, and he was her uncle. Somebody said he took care of the of the hay goods out here. You want this hotel? I read some of your write-ups here where he he taken care of, he took care of them when they were little. Oh yeah, the foster man I mentioned had four daughters and four sons. One of them, one of the sons married uh, Joe McCorkle's oldest daughter, and she was 14 years older than Mary Ann McCorkle, her young baby daughter. I remember going by the Vocational Agriculture Building. Miles would holler out, "Said, don't step on that egg there." With little kids, you know, you're looking, see, well, what, what in the heck is an egg? My mom and dad had a, my mom had an old place where she was born and had a, some chickens over there. And Miles and his brothers would come by and steal eggs from that location, bring them on out to the store, and trade them to my mother for egg, for candy. And in 1939 or 1940, this lake out here froze. And Carl Potts and some more teenagers walked out to that, uh, you know, that warning sign for river traffic. That's all I got. Tell them about the, about the, uh, when they robbed the bank down here and took off in that place. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 
Thank Every you. year on about the sixth day of May, I post on Facebook about my second cousin, Lou Faulkner Hawkins, becoming a hero. There was they was having a bank meeting over here. I had the board of directors. And it's two two boys from Waterloo that lived somewhere else. Uh, and, they, and they came down and cut the phone lines and robbed the bank. They took uh, Buck Sharp, he was the chairman of the board of directors, they took him up Second Creek to where uh, uh, Lou Hawkins lived, which is now James L's place, James L. Hawkins. What's your uncle's name? James L. James L. Well, James L. lives lived when he died, and they uh, they stopped and they tried to get him to take a drink. He wouldn't take one, so they pulled a pistol on him. He said, "Yeah, I believe I will have a drink." <laughs> so, so, so then, then then when they got through, they tied a what we used to call a tow sack around his head. They tied one behind his back. And they proceeded on up to the highway. 69 and went to Memphis, no, to Savannah and all of this took time and by that time people had got to Florence or got to a telephone and uh, called radio station WMSD and Muscle Shows and they broadcast it said that the two brothers told what their names were and when they got down in Savannah where the uh, uh, nursing home is now across the street there's a white house over there there's a woman living in it was from waterloo and she recognized him and called the savannah police and they they set up the road and called him <laughs> that's about it yeah. you had mentioned earlier that you remembered about 12 stores in waterloo can you can you talk a little bit more about those? What kind of stores were they? What do you they remember? They're all grocery stores. Okay. And then up here, this side of the uh, where this lady had the restaurant. Later on, Bo Boos Higgins, his name was Carter, Cart Higgins. He had a, a pool hall in there, and uh, my uncle had a store out where Thomas Duncan's daughter lives now. And and Mr. Sullivan there's a little little building there on the Sullivan property where the hotels are now. Mm -hmm. Used to be a doc Dr. Sullivan had an office in there. And various people had stores later on. I had seen something on the uh on a website, this waterloohistory.com, uh, the gentleman that started that had posted some microfish, and one of the articles talked about a hat shop. Do you remember there was a gal around here that had a hat shop? And I was curious about it because I remember seeing a, a picture of a of, of the bridge around here, and there were a bunch of ladies dressed in big long dresses, and they all had hats on, and I just was curious if maybe you remembered anything about that's, a hat that's, shop? That's before my time. Okay. I think the picture you're talking about was the old old bridge going mm. across the second creek you're going to Florence. Okay. I missed one thing. Uh, you know when you're going across the bridge, you go around a curve, you go up our little piece, you see a, a chimney. The base of a chimney on the right when the river's down in the wintertime. Anybody ever notice that? Yes. Chalmer Hodges daddy lived there and when the river came out of course they forced everybody out anyhow Chalmer had some farm farmland up on the ridge and he'd been up there farming and he was coming back and DC Jones hired a man to fly overhead said get your groceries and gasoline at DC Jones general merchandise and the mules ran away with Chalmer Hodges I don't think it was funny. <laughs> <laughs>